This week, Parasha Parasha Ve'etze. Parasha Ve'etze talked about marriage of Yaakov Avinu and Laban. In other words, Laban is a cruel person. He's a wicked person. And he wants to make Yaakov cruel and wicked. And, and he tries very hard. And instead of, instead of cheating Yaakov and uh, making Yaakov poor and stealing from him, what happens finally? Yaakov comes out with the 12 Shavuotim and very rich man. And Yaakov is the father that was in exile. He's the role model for us in exile. In exile, we're going to live with Laban. Laban is crum, crooked. What do you want to do? You might think that, you know, you know, if they are crum and crooked, that's the only way to save ourselves, to survive. You have to be like them. But Yaakov, you know, tells us in the parasha, if you become like them, you're going to lose your entity as a Jew. Go in Galut. Galut is in turbulence. The people, the Galut, they do the business day that they want to, they act the way that they want to. But Yaakov stays with the emet, emet not an emet, the Yaakov, with the truth. And you see what it is like. That's the point of the culture. Oh, it's very interesting. This Yaakov Avinu, Laban tricks him, and he marries two of them, Rachel, Rachel and Leah. Now, the apostle says, after the marriage, he loved Rachel more than Leah. The apostle says, Bayar Hashem Pasol Lamedale, Perech of Tad, Bayar Hashem Kistenu Aleah. Hashem saw Kistenu Aleah. That Leah is hated, is not unloved, is hated. Bayif Tachet Rachma, and open her womb. It's interesting. A lot of people don't understand that even Leah was barren. Leah would not have children. Hashem opened her womb because Hashem saw Kisenu Aleah. The fact that Hashem saw that she was hated, Rachel was barren. Therefore, you see, Rachel stayed barren, but even Leah, Hashem had to open her womb to make her able to have children. Now, the question is, why did Leah feel hated? What do you want to tell me? You want to tell me Yaakov was mistreating, mistreating Leo? Yaakov, imagine like he said, we're going to learn next week. We're going to learn that you know, the, the Malachim, Olim, Yordim, Bo. Malachim saw that, you know, the, the, the Olim, Yordim, Bo. Why Malachim, Olim, Yordim, Bo? Because Malachim saw his image. He said, somebody, you know, the Gemara says, those that he carried territory. If somebody says something wrong, they cancel him out to be Baal Mesorah to carry the Torah. They were carrying the Torah has such a figure, stature. Now Yahweh Avinu. Now you see that Mago misled Leo and Yahweh showered Leo with all of the blessings. He did whatever that he was capable to do to make Leo happy. Showering her with blessings, showering her with gifts treating her nicely, whatever that was possible in his hand, he did. But nevertheless, Leo felt unloved and Leo felt hated. Why? If you do all of these showers, all of these blessings, why does she feel like that? Because for that, we have to understand what's the essence of marriage. As long as we don't understand that, we can't relate what the Pasuk is saying. Pasuk is telling us what's the essence of marriage. The essence of marriage doesn't depend how much you shower your wife, how much you pay attention to your wife, how much money, how much you provide for your wife. The essence of marriage is that the wife has to be number one for the husband. As long as the wife is not number one for the husband, she feels unloved. You buy a mansion, take it to Europe, you do a lot of expensive gifts, nothing fills up that vacuum. Because the marriage means that the wife expects to be number one for the husband. If it's not number one for the husband, nothing makes her happy. Now, what are the elements that competing with wife? One most is job. If she feels you love your job, you pay attention to your job, you are devoted to your job than her, that hurts her. It's not just a point that's going wrong with her. 
she feels she failed in marriage. I'm not number one for my husband. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not capable enough. I cannot compete with the business. He gets involved more business. He has more passion for the business. See the way that he talks about business, the way that he goes for business. The fraction of that he doesn't do for me. That passion is not there. That love is not there. That dedication is not there. That potential is there for the business. How come that potential doesn't come to me? It's not for me because I'm not loved. I'm done the number one for him. Number two is parents. The child never left his parents. Still, he talks about his parents. He does everything for the parents. And see, I came out with a very crucial statement to the Khatan in my channel. I tell Khatan, Mr. Khatan, you want to respect your parents, the greatest respect that you could give to your parents, you should respect your wife more than your parents. I venture to say this statement and I stay with it. Listen again. The greatest respect that you could give to your parents is to respect your wife more than your parents. Because of this person. Because of touches as reality of life. Psychologists write many books to teach us what marriage, how to maintain marriage. We can't do the job. Torah tells us one word and he does it. But I'm telling us, if she feels she's secondary to the parents, then you're not allowed to call the parents. I'm not welcome here. It's just a piece, you know, disgrace the parents totally, totally. Why? Because she feels the norm. She has right to do that. Because you did it to her. But if she feels that she's number one, there's no competition, then, oh, let's help your mother, let your father, let's invite them, let's be there. Why? She's, a, she's, a, she's, not, she's not Hamas. <laughs> she doesn't hate people. How come here? She's ready to do any type of chesed to anybody, but to this, doesn't want, she doesn't want to do chesed. Who is blamed here? The husband. There's no question about it. Once the husband doesn't treat well, doesn't convey the message well. In other words, are two issues. One issue is that the husband has to treat well and she has to get it. So I understand, there are two things. Marriage and chinuch, it doesn't depend what you do. If a psychologist come and say, whatever that you do is number 100. But the wife says, this man doesn't like me, doesn't respect me. Or the child says, the father doesn't love me, doesn't like me. You fail, <laughs> you fail. It's not on paper. And you should know that you are shooting your own legs. Because if it doesn't work, who suffers? If it doesn't work, who suffers? Doesn't, she doesn't suffer. The child doesn't, you suffer the most because you are not bringing home, uh, happy home, peace at home. You're gonna suffer the most. When you bring a child that's not proper, you're gonna suffer the most. Therefore, Torah is telling us that he did whatever that he was supposed to do. But he didn't help because it's not number one. For us to learn that you have to make sure that the wife is number one in our marriage. Once we do that, we get the greatest blessing in life.